Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am honored to be joined by Mr. Rob Latham. Rob, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so this is a really neat one. Um, we are talking about the power of using rhythm and drums to help kids who have faced problems with trauma and uh, all kinds of very serious problems, but using the power of drums and percussion to um, to kind of as, as therapy. Is that fair to say? Yes. We use the drum to help self-regulate and to bring order to the chaos that uh, that child is feeling either in their body or in their mind. Yeah. Self-regulation is something we'll talk about here um, soon. And you have a book that came out and all this good stuff. But before we start, and uh, I, I will we'll get into this really, really soon, but I wanted to um, uh, right up front, give a shout out. Uh, there's a new um, top tier Patreon member and I, I you get a shout out on an episode and I want to do that right uh, uh, right up front. So Mr. Jason Christ has joined and is uh, now at the upper tier on Patreon. So thank you to Jason. Um, he said he has a small one car garage drum shop called JAC's Drum Shop here in Arizona. Where he is, he said he builds snare drums using a variety of shell designs, configurations, stave shells, segmented shells, hourglass shells, all kinds of stuff. Um, I also hand turn custom air vent grommets for drums. Pretty mm. cool. So he's working with Doc Sweeney's hollow core snares. Um, I just want to give him a big shout out. Jason has actually been on my page. He's been a patron of the show for I think it said 36 months. So thank you to Jason for doing that because it really does. It pays for like the service we're using to record this right now. So uh, thanks to Jason. Check him out on Facebook at facebook.com slash J-A-C-S drum shack and Instagram at the same thing. So I'll put that in the description. Anyway, thanks to Jason. But Rob, so this yes. is a cool, very important topic because kids need help. Kids need, uh, there's a lot of problems out there. We were talking before we started that we're pretty lucky guys to be, you know, in in good situations, but a lot of kids aren't in that um in that situation at all. So just what is, what is all this? How do you use mu drums and music for therapy? And we'll just go from there. Okay. Well, uh, I teach at an elementary school here uh, close to Kansas city. It's Ridgeview elementary in Liberty, Missouri. Uh, I, the school that I teach at is a title one school. So we have uh, a lot of counselors. We have a lot of therapists. Uh, we help out uh, social workers um, we have the dentist come in, we have doctors, we do back snacks, we make sure that the kids are comfortable, they feel safe here. So because a lot of the kids come from trauma, they come from uh, neglect at home, poverty, uh, maybe a parent is in jail or a single parent who is just doing their best, working three jobs, so they're having to raise uh, their own uh, siblings, you know, if they were yeah. the oldest. So um, when they come to school, it, learning, uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic is not really high on the, on the list of things to do because they're stressed out. They're, they're just wanting to survive. So uh, what I run is what's called the care room. It's calming and recovering environment. And uh, my badge says ISS, but we just, that's just what it, we changed it. Sure. To what does ISS care. stand for? In school suspension. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we wanted to do is, you know, we're always talking about teaching those missing skills to, uh, you know, to adults so they don't go back to prison, but we want to start it early. So when a child, comes to me, maybe they're struggling in school, or maybe struggling at home, they can come to me and I help regulate them. Uh, it could be like a 10, 15 minute break where we can, you know, play a game that works with uh, learning executive skills. Whenever I say executive skills, uh, it's using the frontal lobe of the brain or, you know, social emotional skills, which is a hot topic, you know, because COVID a few years ago, uh, Kids, everybody was staying inside. So we had young kids that were not knowing how to uh, play nice with other kids or just they were going through their chaos at home, you know, with yeah. parents that were stressed out. So, you know, the, 
Western world, we look at drums differently. We look at them as uh, adding a beat to a song. But, you know, in different cultures, you go to Africa or the Middle Eastern, it is something that is spiritual. It builds community. It builds uh, self-esteem, self-worth. And so what I do here is uh, kind of what they've been doing for hundreds of years back there is using um, the drum. And uh, take uh, Robert uh, Lawrence Friedman. He wrote a book called The Healing Power of the Drum. And he was talking about, uh, again, Western culture, uh, we do a lot of head stuff. Whenever we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we say we just say the Pledge of Allegiance. If we say Hail Mary, we just say Hail Mary. Uh, a lot of countries, cultures, they play it. So it's not only just in our head, by playing it, by our hands touching something, a, a drum skin, our body, something, it then becomes part of us. So if I say, Bart, you can do hard things, that, and we just say it, well, then that's just stuck in your head. But if we play it on our body, Bart, you can do hard things, and we repeat that over and over and over as almost like a mantra, then it becomes part of you, not just your head. It becomes a part of your body. In my room, I have about oh, uh, eight djembes, uh, some congas, uh, marimbas, you know, all tuned to see. And the kids can come in, and sometimes I will just sit down with them, and I will let them lead the groove. Other times I will start to groove, but maybe we won't talk at all. We'll just play and uh, have a communication through rhythm. It's very different than what it used to be like, you know, when they would, at the beginning of the year, you know, I would do a lot of talking, you know, let's do this. Uh, grasshopper or puppy dog, you know, grasshopper, puppy dog, play it on the drums and you repeat it back to me. Now they come in and they'll go to it. And you know how they talk about you get on your phone and you kind of go into this matrix, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, 20 minutes have just gone by. (laughs) Uh, Well, the same thing can happen with drums and rhythm. You get a pulse going and you go, oh my goodness, 10 minutes has gone by. They are regulated and they are ready to go back to class. Uh, we do a lot of other things in here too. It's not just all drums and incense. No, we do we sure. do a lot of uh, teaching. But really though, like in simplest terms, it's people, someone, a, a child is having like a meltdown. They're having a hard mm-hmm. time. They're, they're, they've been asked to leave an, their class and they come to you you're the guy who let's just calm down. Let's do this. Would the mm-hmm. alternative to you doing drums be someone more like more of like a punishment or would it be more like, yes, wow, this, okay. this room before I came to it. And even the first couple of years would get destroyed with kids with rage. Uh, and now, and, and we'd have uh, those, they, they call them safe rooms where it's like a small little room padded and you put the kids in there. And you, I know you've heard of those, sure. but we don't have them anymore because this whole big classroom is considered a safe room. And the kids that come in here, and I have about 30 that I meet with daily, uh, they are a community and, and, and I love them. They are, they are great kids and all they are is life has handed them something raw yeah. uh, on the outside of this school and they're just missing some skills. So we're going to, you know, just like I didn't go to school knowing how to do math. I had a teacher teach me how to do math. Yeah. I am the teacher that teaches them to say a thank you. You know, whenever somebody does something nice to, to feel gratitude, to feel sure. empathy, to feel, uh, feel good about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. You're using it for a very therapeutic reason, but do kids ever like, like want to pick up and become drummers from this? Um, I do. Well, I've been a drum instructor for 35 years uh, at, a, at a music store, Palin Music. So as soon as I get done here teaching, 
yeah. all day. Then I go teach drum <laughs> private drum lessons at sure. night. So I get to spend 12 hours a day with drums. Yeah. Uh, the kids, they are starting to get hand drums. You know, yeah. this year at, at Christmas time, they asked for hand drums. They asked for musical instruments to go along with the games that they were also new and that they were wanting to have. But yeah, this yeah. is like the first year where it was like, hey, I got a I got a small djembe for Christmas. I got a guitar for Christmas. And so that was that's very exciting because that's lifelong. That game is not, you know, it's old yeah. news in three months, but a djembe. Yeah. Oh boy, I love those. I'll have one till day I die. It's uh, it reminds me of when so David Frangioni, who runs Modern Drummer, was on recently, and he mm-hmm. talked about how he. It's a great story that he tells. It's sad, but is it? He lost his eye. He had eye cancer. Lost his eye as a kid. Kids would make fun of him, but he found drums, and it was like a good outlet for him. So it seems like just with what you're saying that like, yes, it's good in your classroom, but really it's like kids should. And I'm, I'm sure they do realize that, man, I can do this at home and get that same soothing effect. Yes. They can regulate at home because yes, w- one, anytime that you play the drums or play any musical instrument, but I'm just going to say drums and you get that groove going when you get done with it, your brain has naturally produced a dose, uh, enough uh, a dopamine that it equals one dose of Ritalin. Oh, wow. So anytime that a child comes into my room and we play it, I'm giving them that natural Ritalin, you know, so they can go back. They're just calm. Now, they might have to come back again, and they do, but, you know, some kids need different dosages. Uh, on the part where they get to, they not only get to take it home and use drums, but we also celebrate it here at school at Ridgeview. Uh, we have what's a monthly assembly that's called a community circle. And like I said, I have all these drums in here. I also have about 25 buckets. Uh, our music teacher has about 30 djembes. So just like if you went to Middle Eastern country or uh, Africa and they have drum circles, Okay, to start, we're gonna we're gonna play uh, djembe's, uh, and we're gonna tell stories. We're gonna teach lessons. We're gonna get, tell our history. We kind of do the same thing at Ridgeview. We, uh, as the kids are coming in, we will have about twenty kids playing djembe's. You know, we're doing a drum circle, and we're it's not really fast. You know, we're not showing sure. off. It's just a groove. It's to get the kids in. We're going to start celebrating you. We're going to celebrate your accomplishments. Uh, The kids that I work with, about uh, four years ago, we started uh, bucket drumming. Oh, cool. And uh, so uh, we will pick a song, and it will do a short version, and we'll do choreography with it. So, like, one of their favorites is to do uh, Thriller by Michael Jackson. So we will do, uh, like, uh, Dracula yeah, movements. Moves. We'll do Frankenstein. We'll do Ghost. Uh, we'll do the Michael Jackson movement, and it's a lot of fun. And so the kids that are normally last picked in a you know playground basketball game or last picked in PE, they get to get up in front of the school. Cool, yeah, and do the bucket drumming routine. So we're setting goals. We're practicing, you know, we have to do it once a day. If we, if we know that we're going to, it's coming, we do it once a day. And so they can, they get the, those feelings of feeling nervous, uh, accomplishing a goal, and then getting that uh, joy juice of, of feeling, you know, the applause that they get afterwards. Yeah. Uh, what we started doing this year is we took it up a notch. And so I made, uh, the whole school does it. So because, you know, body drumming is important and all, I mean, there's a lot of kids that might be in trauma or in stressed out that we don't know about because they're not showing it on the outside. So a week before our community circle, I will send out a video of the choreography of the rhythm of the beats. And when uh, they have circle up time every morning uh, in each classroom, they will practice it. So when it comes Friday, I got 400 kids 
plus my bucket drummers and myself leading them. And we're all doing a celebration of rhythm and wow. drums. That is awesome. I love that it's drums. Obviously, we love drums as as mm -hmm. drummers. But I think in general that like, I don't know, that that like focusing your attention on anything, it could be sports or you like painting, whatever. That is so important for people's brains, even as an adult. It's like it's good to find time to not where you're not just working or, you know, doing family stuff. It's good to take time just to like pl for us again, play the drums, but mm -hmm. focus on anything. It's just it's just great. Now, it seems like you've like you've changed the whole school. I don't know what it was like before, but it seems like it's now a drum school. I mean, how, it, what's it the is. reception <laughs> of all the teachers? Well, they know it's they know it's coming. And actually, the district uh, Liberty School District uh, made me uh, the district uh, support employee of the year. So for the wow. whole district. So it's Congrats. been it's been growing. Uh, it's taken us about eight, nine years to do it. But, you know, I have a, a Tibetan singing bowl that I use to teach us focus and, uh, you know, mindfulness. You know, I put it in a kid's hand and, uh, you know, ask them what they're thinking about it. Our counselor has a Tibetan singing bowl. My principal has a, a Tibetan singing bowl. I was telling uh, my principal, Dr. Tyler Shannon, uh, that a few years ago, how I was reading uh, this doctor, uh, a music therapist in New York, took his uh, drummers out into the city and played to the tempo of the city. Oh, wow. Okay. And so it was fast and it was moving and no one was paying attention to him. And then he says, let's slow it down. Let's simplify it. And so he just, they just laid a slow groove. Once they slowed down, the people started to stop and notice. Okay, so now let me bring it back to here. If I have a student that is uh, struggling you know, they're not so much, you know, I don't want to say rage because then they, that's a whole different other thing, but they are really upset. Uh, even like my principal, I, he has a djembe and he will come in and he will just boom, boom, boom. And I will be with that child and we will, you got this, let's breathe. Because sometimes we have to have two people in uh, on there so sure. in, a, in a classroom and so we'll be yeah. wor working if i need help and he'll just pick up a drum and he'll just do a slow heartbeat so we're trying to regulate that and i'm trying to slow and there's no talking going on i'm not going now just be quiet yeah uh, you got this uh, you know you know yeah. and the old my old my parents would say you know the old i'll give you a reason to cry <laughs> we don't say that here but here it's just okay you can just uh you got this, let's breathe. And all while, boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, boom. And you know, other cultures have been doing that for hundreds of years. You know so much more of this, about this than I do, but I can say from having a three-year-old, <laughs> which, you know, wow, that's a lot sometimes. But I can say that it's these just, and I think it's, it's very normal three-year-old stuff, but it's like losing their mind but if you just kind of like again let's just just i don't want to say distract but we're gonna we're right. doing something else we're not gonna i'm not okay what's wrong stop we, we're not gonna do that i'm not gonna like elevate the situation but i just kind of switch to something else or i start playing the drums or because we have a little drum set next to his play area and or Perfect. just start doing legos or something they forget about it, it yeah know. Yeah, it happens okay. again, but you just then you distract them again. Uh, I got uh, about two years ago. I got certified in neurorhythmic trauma therapy by Dr. Uh, Pamela Lynn Serafin, and one of the things that she said that just stuck with me: when you are playing, and you know, if you're just time stops, you are no longer thinking about what you're angry about you're yeah. think you're not thinking about uh that you didn't have breakfast you're not thinking about you know the fight you got in with your brother at that moment all you are is focusing in on me who's trying to help you or uh yeah. and that beat that slow rhythmic beat and uh you know and the brain it wants that order because whenever that child whenever your 3 year old is 
you know, it's that's frustration. You know, they they're trying to tell you something that life is not right. Yeah. And please help me make this moment right. Yeah. And it doesn't help the the three year old if you elevate up too. I work with this thing called conscious discipline, and it's uh, created by Dr. Becky Bailey. And so there are three brain states. There is your survival state, which is where you're back in uh, your brain stem. Okay. And then there's your emotional your, and your limbic station. Uh, that's your uh, emotional. And so that's the side of the brain. Where we want to be as the adult is we want to be in the frontal lobe, the executive state. So when a child, you know, if is losing their marbles, uh, and not saying anything, and they're throwing things, uh, they're in their survival state. They're saying, this is not okay. And what we want to do is we want to try and work them up. So, you know, and it has to go, it, it has to go from survival to emotional to the frontal lobe, the executive state. Uh, so, you know, the first thing I do, and oh, let me also say that just not every person that's in their survival state is destroying a room or having a tissy fit. It could just be they put their head down and they put their hoodies up over their head. Uh, they're in survival state too because they've just shut down. Sure. And and I, I've been that way. I'm sure you have too, where it's just like, I, I can't take this anymore and I'm yeah. I'm giving up. Okay, yeah. you're you're in fight or flight there. You're just, uh, you're in survival state. The minute, so then I go up and I'm, you know, my just play, you know, I, I could just like snap or have a shaker with me and just breathe. Okay. I'm not saying anything. I'm just shaking, breathing. The minute they say something, you know, it could be a curse towards me or this sucks, you know, just something. I know that they are now in the emotional state. Okay. Okay. They're at the side, working on the side of the brain. Now I got them. So now we can now start working towards being up here. Now, here's the thing is too many times when I had a three year old and when he went into that uh, fight or flight, I join him. You know, I would go, ah, I would be. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sometimes <laughs> and, it happens. I mean. And then I, and today, I mean, even yeah. today, I mean, I'm, I'm calm right now, but I, I probably lose my marbles about three times a week. And uh, my assistant principal, uh, Mrs. Heather Buckman, she knows I'm about ready to lose it because I have my uh, pen and I'm like flicking it like crazy. And then she'll go, uh, go, go take a walk and, uh, yeah. and then she'll do it. But, you know, because we're a team, Dr. Shannon, uh, Mrs. Buckman and myself, uh, we're a team. One of us can step out and the other person step in because they know we've been at this long enough. We know what needs to happen and it's because somebody needs to be here. Yeah, if someone's yeah. back here, someone has to be at the front uh, in their executive state. Yeah, I mean, you're absorbing all of this stuff and this rage from these kids. And mm -hmm. long story short, I, I've filmed for the last six years seminars for continuing education for psychologists and tons of classes. But again, I'm right. in the back just filming. People always go, you must know so much. It's like, <laughs> you'd be amazed at how, uh, at the end of the day, I can say, what, what were we talking about? <laughs> but uh, it's always fun and good. But um, uh, there's there's a whole thing about self-care and, and right. treat, taking care of yourself because you're just absorbing all this rage from, from I don't, I, I don't want to use the wrong words, but you know what I mean, this anger yeah. from kids. But it does sound like fun what you're doing with drums and kind of regulating, but really you're in the like, you're in the deep end a lot of times, I'm sure. And right. it's not all just like no, djembes I, and shakers. No, know? no, I've been hit, kicked, bit. Oh man. Uh, things thrown at me. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't happen as much because, because of the culture that we've created at our school, if a child knows that they're about ready to go to a dark place, they'll just ask for a break. Oh, yeah, that's good. And they'll come down because my room is safe. Uh, like I said, you know, like you said earlier, uh, a lot of places treat this room as as punishment. And teachers would even, you know, they look for reasons to get kids 
out of, you know, out of not so much at this school. It's like they they want to have their kids in their classrooms. And so they will let them take that 10 minute break to get regulated so that they can come back and and learn because they don't want to reteach things. No, no, that's a good point of really. Oh, we covered this. What did I miss? And then you're mm-hmm. everyone's getting um, screwed up. I think it's uh, fascinating. I think it's extremely powerful. I think it's great you're doing it. Hopefully more people around the country and the world do it. But on, on that note, I do want to know. I, so this is your specific field. I'm sure there's tons and tons of different ways people use percussion as therapy. But I don't know. I'm sure you know a fair amount about all the different things around the world. Can you just tell us a little bit how other people use percussion in therapy, and I don't expect you to be an, ec- an expert on every single <laughs> world, wor- you know, <laughs> right culture, uh, right? You, you know, the, a lot of them used it to uh, to build the community, mm-hmm. which is what you know. I've taken that model and brought it here. Uh, they were to teach lessons, and you know, okay, so you take the take the djembe, and that's uh, uh, West African uh, Anka J Anka Bay. Everyone gather together in peace. Okay, that's what. So whenever you would have that djembe, and someone would bring it out, you knew that there was going to be a party. You knew that there was going to be a celebration. You knew there was going to be dancing. You knew that there was going to be stories and lessons being told. So you know that's why I have so many of them, and I love djembes. And there's a spirit to it. They, um, I'm, I'm not. I'm hoping I'm not wrong on this, but they believe that every djembe has a spirit. It has the spirit of the tree that it was cut down uh, and and made into it. It has the spirit of the animal that maybe fed the community, but now its skin is now part of it uh, to make the sound. And then there is the person who puts it all together, and the player. So the the spirit of three or four things is in that one drum. And I have, uh, at my house, I have a Makuta drum. And it came from Central Africa. And it would be like they would put, uh, it it was a log. And they would take hot ashes, put it in the center, and then just let... You know, it burn cool. Yeah, the center out. Okay, so you also added the spirit of fire to the Makuta drum, and it took a long time. So th- these drums were so important to the community that if they ever had to leave, uh, you know, or if they had to, if there was a flood coming, or uh, you know, a fire, or if they had, to, you know, their food ran out. They would leave us many things, but they would not leave their drum. That yeah, drum incredible. was important. And, you know, drums uh, in history uh, have been part of history. You know, a lot of women were, yeah. were drummers. Uh, you know, uh, take, uh, you know, we always think of uh, the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston, uh, <laughs> you know, holding his arms out in the yep. Red Sea, and, and, and the whole thing took like five minutes, you know. <laughs> but uh, there's a story uh, in, uh, that Miriam, uh, I think that is his sister or the person who took care of him, sure. uh, was a drummer. And to, you know, because whenever the Red Sea parted, uh, he had to have his arms out for a long time, and he was getting tired. So Marion got out her drum, and I'm sure it was like a doombeck or a tambourine or a frame drum, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever whatever it was, and played for Moses. So I'm like going, way to go, Marion. You know, that I wish they would added that to, you know, that Charlton Heston, you know. Yeah. That yeah. would have been, been more lifelike. I mean, but uh, that's like encouragement. And that's just that even goes back to drums on ships to make people row faster and keep right. up the obviously that's a rhythm thing as well. But right. um, and think about yeah. our own uh, little drummer boys, you know, uh, they were and I tell my students they were between the ages of eight and 12. Yeah. And they had to come up with uh those patterns that you and I practiced for forever, you know, it was like they, because they didn't have walkie talkies or radios or cell phones, 
You know, they had to come up with a pattern that meant something. So a sure. double paradiddle sounds different than a single paradiddle, which sounds different than a rough. And, you know, whenever uh, you had all that going on and that's how we got our 25 standard yeah. rudiments, you know, it was nine-year-old kids that came up with that, which Pretty is amazing. Crazy. And yeah. then I also tell them, I say, and, you know, in, the, in those wars, you wanted to be the little drummer boy because it was considered bad luck to, uh, to shoot you. You yeah. know, they, they wanted to steal the drum, but, you know, for some, some reason, they, they honored you. Uh, yeah. And as soon as that war, you know, as soon as the battle started, they put that drum on their back and then they started running around picking up the, the wounded, you sure. know. And so, you know, yeah. drummers have been heroes for a long time. Yes. And we continue to be heroes. Heroes. Your, your, your work, <laughs> I think you are a hero for what you're doing oh, because you. of uh, it's very important. And just in general, kids, kids in these positions, kids, uh, they're kind of like a lot of times, uh, you know, it's cliche almost, but like left behind, you know, right. they're, they're not cared for as much. So you clearly have a very big heart and and want to um, help these kids. But obviously working as a drum teacher, I'm sure you've taught a lot of kids drum set oh yeah over you the know. years and all that stuff and, and it's gone through periods of you know you know everybody wanted to play like neil peart uh yeah. then then we had the carter beaufort then the dana yeah. carries and then uh you know it, it, it's <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting to think about yeah every you know i want to be like bonham i want to I, uh -huh. I talked for a while and it was like Young kids were all super into the band Imagine Dragons. I know. It, I play it all the time. Yeah. Still. Believer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was like, okay, we'll do that. That's fine. But uh -huh. um, you also mentioned, so you, you you did talk about them a little bit, but you mentioned the work of uh, Becky Bailey and Pamela Lynn Serafin. Correct. Um, and, and everyone who's thinking it, yes, she was... Pamela was either married or you said they're not yeah, together married, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, were married, married to Danny um, from Danny Serafin from Chicago. Uh, Correct. Which is pretty cool. These two ladies are are absolutely brilliant. Okay, I learned from Becky Bailey first, and she was the one that got excited about drums. And so whenever I was talking just a little bit ago about the brain states, uh, that. That's Becky Bailey. That's simple, kind of simplifying the brain in three uh, little and three regions. Okay, and so when we go throughout our day uh, here at Ridgeview, and there's a lot of schools that go through, and it's called conscious discipline. Uh, we we talk about the brain states. My students know about the brain states. You know, I got third mm. graders wow. that will tell them that you know that their lid is flipped and they're in the emotional state yep. or you know they'll tell me about what they were feeling and we'll talk a lot about feelings uh you know we use puppets and stuff and they will do a lot of uh acting out through using puppets hmm, cool they're, whenever they're in emotional states uh and it, whenever the, and then it gets them to their their executive state when uh so i get to travel with them uh, at some of their uh, events, I've got gone down to Florida, I've gone to Texas, I've gone to uh, Louisville hmm. uh, to talk about what I do here uh, using drums. And, nice. and it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, now, Pamela, Dr. Serafin, Lynn Serafin, uh, she took those three brain states, but then showed me how each part of the brain affects that brain. Uh, in, have you seen the, um, the video of Mickey Hart uh, with the funny cap on and, and he's playing drums and he's lighting up? Uh, no. Oh, but Mickey should, Hart from Gra The Grateful Dead, obviously. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he's Maybe done a I lot have. of I don't know. No. A lot of stuff about, uh, he does a lot of stuff about drumming in the brain. Sure. And you should look at it. Because anytime I look uh, up, and it's, it's fascinating. And so whenever you're playing the drum uh, or any instrument, your brain just lights up. I mean, it's not just a little bit. I mean, it's like a full-on party. So Ms., uh, Dr. Serafin, she talks about how the drum affects each area of the brain. So, you know, uh, the cerebellum, that's like motor skills, and that's balance, and that's uh, the coordination. 
Uh, you get into the frontal lobe. That is where you know you're you're studying. That's uh, uh, you strategize. You're like having that conversation with the soloist. You know the sure. musician. So you're part of it. The parietal lobe. That is like uh, following the conductor. Uh, you know he's there, and you're following along. Uh, not going faster or slower if you're in band class. You know, in those fifth, you know, if you're in band in fifth grade, that's hard to do. You want to go is. to the at the tempo. So when that parietal lobe is telling you, teaching you how to do that. So again, it's all about focus. Yeah. Whenever I go and speak, I have pretty much everything that Pamela told me in all these slides. And and I use them for the uh uh the the educators that are there to learn how rhythm and it's for them too i mean they always talk about feeling really good after mm. the 90 minute uh presentation i just gave where they go oh my goodness I, i'm gonna go buy a tibetan bowl or i'm gonna go buy some shakers i'm gonna yeah. go, you know because we forget you know music's supposed to be played and it's supposed to be fun yes so true it's cool that you are spreading the message of this around the world. And you're doing that right now as well. I mean, so um, before we talk about your book, mm -hmm. let's just I think it might be cool to maybe talk about like uh, people can do this at home, I would imagine. Like you right. can do this with uh, I, I, it sounds like it doesn't just have to be kids. Like if no, you know, if you yourself are having a bad day, I mean, I don't know if you work in a cubicle in an office, you should take a djembe with you and start playing in the middle but of it. You can take a frame drum with you, and cool. and what I do is, you know, I will get out a, a Tibetan bowl, and I will go around in circles, and I will say, take your hand and go no faster or slower than me. Your hand's going to match my hand. And so we'll do fingertips, and then I'll say, hey, how does, how does your hand feel? How does the drum feel? Does it feel rough? Does it feel cold, warm? Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it, breathe out through your mouth slowly. Go no faster or slower. Now go to your fingernails. Mm. How did it change? How does it feel? Take a deep breath in through your nose. You know, yeah. Go, it's just kind of just slowing and, and you're using senses. Because so many times when, and I'm just as guilty as whenever I get angry, I clench up. And, you know, I'll start cussing, you know, under my yeah. breath. I mean, yeah. uh, that was one of the benefits of a mask when it, during COVID <laughs> yeah. is I could, you know, say all these words and no one could read my lips. Yeah, exactly. But now, now I got to use those filters again. But you take you know, that, uh, you know, a little frame drum or a Tibetan, have that my, like I said, my principal, my counselor, they have it in, uh, in their office. Now, a principal's job is pretty uh stressful you know dealing with you know school bureaucracy oh, yeah, or, an, sure. or or an angry parent or something and i took a picture of him one time and he had his tibetan bowl and he was on the phone and he was just going around in circles <laughs> just going awesome. around in circles feeling that vibration being in the moment probably focusing in on his breathing because breathing is a huge part of it too you know we got to get the yeah. oxygen to the brain yeah and we got to slow that heartbeat down one thing, too, that like I think someone like you and your school and just kind of like the general kind of perception of stuff like this that I don't think should be the case is like, oh, that's hippy dippy stuff. <laughs> and it's like I kind of see where people are coming from or like with like Mickey Hart or things like that. It's like, yeah, right. I get I get the perception. But this is real deal stuff where I guess that would be your hurdle. And I think I, I have people in my mind that I know of like older generation who'd be like, oh, I, like they're kind of, they kind of poo poo everything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But then they take a, they take a bunch of meds to exactly. try and get the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I'm all, I'm all for better living through chemistry if you need sure. it. Sure. But you know, there's just something yeah. about, you know, being in the moment playing and, you know, with Becky Bailey, Dr. Bailey and Dr. Lynn Serafin, uh, you know, there's the science Here's the thing is I kind of like the science of things. Mm -hmm. And whenever you can show me the brain and you can show me and, and they got, they always show these videos and it's pretty cool. And, and that's one of the reasons I love LinkedIn is because I belong to all these and, and I'm not being bombarded by 
p- political propaganda yeah, Facebook and stuff, stuff like that, Facebook yeah. stuff, or you know what they're having for dinner. Uh, they, you can see these neurons, the brain neurons. It's it's a magnificent thing, and you can just see that one. You know, there's a strong neuron here, and then there's this neuron that's like searching, and it's you know it's, it, it's happening whenever you're practicing. You know, we got to learn how to memorize something, you know, you, any daily life thing, you know, learning how to walk, learning how to talk, eat, yeah. just survival. Uh, you know, that's a that was a neuron connecting with another, another neuron yeah. and then just building strong. And and the, the, the I mean, the science is there. And so, yeah. that's, yep. I, whatever anybody talks about the hippie dippy, you know, I'll laugh and say, yeah, you know, we have the incense going and stuff like that. <laughs> Drums, we do sit around and. Yeah, uh, but it's work. I mean, and, and of course work. I'm saying that from the standpoint of like, I think this is real deal stuff and working. But uh, you mentioned when we were originally talking that you enjoyed uh, the Bill Sherman Sesame Street yes. episode. Yes. I think shows like Sesame Street or. You know, and really a lot of PBS shows, they understand the like importance of music and rhythm and how just even like memorizing things to a rhythm with a drum going in the background. It's just it's really important and it's really powerful. Right. I uh, um, I, I was an avid viewer of Sesame Street whenever I was a kid mm-hmm. and then whenever my children were my they're 22 and 19 now but i would watch it with them uh now it it changed because i didn't have elmo but i i think i had a lot more you know characters you know to go from where they seem to spend like a half hour on elmo uh (laughs) but the music was always there you know and mr rogers i loved mr rogers and he would always have a song. Now, the thing that I loved about Mr. Rogers was he would he knows that our world was uh, very noisy. And there was times that there would just be like dead air. Yeah. Slow. He would not not say anything. You know, I'm putting on my shoes. You know, he wouldn't say I'm putting on my shoes. I am now tying my shoe. Yeah, but you know, you there see. was just that dead air. That he, I, I saw this uh, on a documentary where he was, that was purpose. That was on purpose. And I didn't know it at the time, but I thought that's brilliant. So whenever I do my uh, presentation for adults or for kids, uh, when we will do this thing called a wave and it's drums playing at different times, and then we'll gradually go down to where there might be one drum playing and then there's none. And then I will do that. And we'll just sit there. And then I'll point to my ear. And that's, you listen to what's going on around you. And and they're in the moment. Because a lot of times, I mean, like, uh, I was in a meeting this morning. And we were doing something with our hands. But you know what? I was already thinking about what I was going to be doing on the, uh, you know, thinking about this interview, I was sure. going to be thinking about what I was, I was not in the moment. And so whenever we're in this group, I try to create a time where they are right here in the moment. And it, it, we got to slow our days down. It makes me wonder, do you have like, if you had to give one example kind of in, in, like, in summary of like, you don't have to say his name or her name of like a kid who just like like a success story of okay. like tell us about it i'll give you i'll give you 3 okay okay we do a lot of um music videos okay we'll pick we just uh, for uh, like black history month we just did buddy guys uh, skin deep i go home i work up the uh, in my studio i work up the keys and the music and everything and then i'll come in here i'll set up a little studio and my kids who wouldn't sing at the beginning of our time, now we'll sing Skin Deep, skin, you know, they will sing it, you know, one at a time, you know, so they have cool. my attention. I have, And so then I use GarageBand here on the computer. And so I build a whole choir of kids and then we'll make a video of 
of this. And so, and I always use puppets. So I have like a green screen in here. Wow, I have, that's awesome. I, and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I bring in microphones and we video this stuff. Okay, so we were working on, on a video and there was going to be puppets. And the kids, like I said, I, kids love puppets because uh, Dr. Becky Bailey says it takes two people to regulate. Okay, I am, if I'm not there, it still takes two. And so if I'm by myself, my my frontal lobe becomes my sec- second person and says, you got sure. this, you know, let's breathe, okay? A kid, a, a child cannot do that at age, you know, seven or six or seven. So I have to say, okay, breathe with me. All right. So I have these puppets. Kids love the puppets. We use them a lot in the videos. Student is okay at school. But you put him on a bus and he has a little trouble. And so he he got kicked off, off the bus. He loves coming to school. School's not the problem. The bus is. Uh, and he knew that I was working on, the vi- on this one video uh, that was going to be played at one of our community circles. So he walked. You know, his parents or his mom gave him the choice, you can stay home because you're kicked off the bus. We can't get you there. Uh, So he walked. He wanted, he did not want to miss out on this opportunity. So he walked to school. We, we did our thing in here. He got to spend the day at school, be with his friends, be with, and then he walked home. Another thing, uh, again, a sister uh, was having, she got sent home. Uh, They were, uh, having some problems. This the boy. He was like on the fence. He could either go, you know, is either way. So I built a good relationship with him. His mom, his sister, got kicked out. I didn't really work with the sister. Mom gave him the option. Well, you can stay home with your sister because she doesn't have to go to school. And she says, No, I want to go. And help Mr. Latham. I want to go to school. I want to go to school. Wow, that's and awesome. And so he came in. Uh, had another kid who Mrs. But- he he was brand new to here about two years ago. Oh my gosh, he did not he did not have the skills of self regulation, and he got frustrated. And her and I we chased him all around the school for about an hour, and he even told me I needed to get on my knees and pray. And I was like, going, dude, I'm I'm like I'm six four, uh, but you're, you're pretty. But now, wow, he is in here, and he goes straight to the drums. He goes straight to our marimbas, and he just plays, and he doesn't miss a day. And his grades are just going higher, higher, higher. That's Things that he awesome. hated to do, he hated to write, he hated, you know, doing this. But because you know, music just has a way of exercising the brain. His grades are going up and his confidence is going up, too, because a lot of it, you know, a lot of these uh, acting out is just they just don't have the feel like they have the confidence to be able to do uh, the work that's set before them. Yeah, like they're emb- it's it's like it's almost like a movie you see, like a kid. You know, if you see it on screen, you can go, that kid's just embarrassed mm-hmm. or like you can kind of hear their inner thoughts of like, uh, I don't want to do this. So now I'm going to be the class clown and freak out and cause a problem. But Wow, those are cool. I love hearing that. That's awesome. I mean, congr- first off, congratulations for the success of your program and for your school. It sounds like um, it's just it's paying off and very it rewarding is. to you. You know, we have other schools that come and visit our room, and uh, they want it like they want that magic pill like right now. Yeah, but you know, this is something that we've been doing for you know eight nine years. And so it's a, it, we're still learning. We try new things all the time. And when I say we, I'm talking about Dr. Shannon and Mrs. Heather Buckman. Yeah. So that, that's my team. Yeah. Yeah. But you have then put this kind of uh, your practice down on paper and digital. Let's talk about your book. The feeling is bright self-regulation through rhythm and rhyme. So tell us about the book. Okay. So it really started out about during COVID. Uh, we, you know, we were that from March to the end of the school year, we, you know, we were kind of, we couldn't be in school, but they wanted us to be a presence, uh, to the kids. And so what I would do 
is every day I would write a social emotional lesson in poem and play it to drums. Okay. So, uh, and then I would record it and put it on Facebook, uh, Twitter and, uh, Instagram so that the kid, and then the kids could get on it. And I just made it, you know, available cool. to everybody. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's where it started. And so we were out of school for like, like 42 days, school days. So I wrote a poem, 42 poems, you know, <laughs> nice. that was teaching social and emotional skills. So that, you know, that's what I would do my day. And cause they were paying me, so I needed to be working. So, and, and so I, I took my, uh, English degree, uh, from college and, uh, just wrote every day and loved it. And it's just amazing that it was, it exercised the mind yeah, in a different way that I had in, in a while. And then I'd had to put rhythms to it. And, and I, we're what, we're three years into it now. Uh, I still write every day. So what I, Becky Bailey, Dr. Bailey did was she knew what I was doing with the drums and she knew what uh, these rhythmic mantras that I was creating and so she wanted to do it. And so what I did is I recorded uh, 23 of them, the, the, my favorite 23. And then uh, we made a book about 12. And then you can download the, the whole 23 songs, which is my voice, uh, children's voice. We call them the mindful maestros. And then... Uh, like about 20 uh, drum instruments. And, and okay, so I went back kind of like in my 80s uh, musical collection, you know, the Peter Gabriels and sure. the Stings. And yep. the thing that I always loved about them is that how they use percussion in their music. Yep. And so it'd be like you'd hear a, a triangle on the ands and a shaker maybe on every now and then, but it was like all over the place. So whenever I was recording this, uh, that's how I would like go into my eighties, uh, Peter Gabriel sting self, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yeah. create drum parts on how I remember hearing them that I enjoyed that. So whenever you wear, use your headphones, you know, you might hear a triangle on the right hand side. I was really going for the stereo, a That's shaker, cool. a drum set. You yeah. know, and I, of course, I had to go. My my three favorite drummers, uh, Stuart Copeland, uh, Phil Collins, and Neil Peart. Uh, you know, I couldn't help. So whenever I would play the the drum set, of course, I would come up with something that was kind of like uh, what Phil Collins would do with on some of his solos albums or with Peter Gabriel, you know, like when, uh, the, the melt album where he couldn't use, uh, any symbols. And so it was very tribal. So then I would put these kitty, these social emotional, you know, get off the struggle bus to, <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to drums. And so, uh, I, it took me three years to do it. What we wanted to do is Dr. Bailey and I, uh, we wanted this product to be something that could would be more than one time. You know, we we go, we get on our phone and we flip through and yeah. we see nothing. Yeah. We want the the book. So we got this be, this artist who does this beautiful work named Jolie Spellman. She did collage so that every time that you look at the picture that goes along with the mantra, the poem that I wrote you see something different. When I uh, did the music, I made it so that every time that you listen to it, you go, oh, I didn't hear that shaker or I didn't hear that talking drum before. Mm, you know, yeah. So you have to listen to it because it might just be subtle in the background. Sure. Uh, and then we put uh, lessons with it. So uh, Jolie Spellman wrote three art lessons uh, on ways to do collage. So whenever you down, you, you buy the book, you get the music, the downloadable music, and then you get like six lessons. So you get three art lessons from Jolie Spellman. You get two music lessons with me. And, you know, it's like, all you just need to do is get a shaker or you can clap or something. And it's kind of just focusing in on the beat, the groove. And then since I wrote the words to it, 
you know, one poetry lesson. So wow. I did a lot, I did one, uh, I did this poem where there's a lo lot of blanks where you can, if I'm in, in a, in the city, that poem is going to sound different than if I'm in the country or if I'm in my, you know, in my bedroom, but it can work to any of those situations. And then, Hey, put some drums to it. How, how do you, how does it sound? And wow. so I, like I said, it took three years and it came out better than I ever dreamed. I mean, the like illustrations alone are incredible Like oh, from, yeah. from reading a lot of kids books now. I mean, these are real deal. This is the real thing. I mean, they're incredible. So and then the music and all this stuff is just awesome. There is a video that you shared of you discussing it, which I'll, I'll share basically where people can get it. But is this typically sold more for like for classroom use, obviously, because there's yeah. lessons and courses? It's it is uh, sold through conscious discipline and. Yeah, you have to go through there. And so, like, I, I spoke this morning at a, a professional development Zoom. Uh, at a, I did a Zoom call through uh, to this other school, and they all had, all the teachers had a copy of the wow. book. And That's they were going to awesome. be, like, doing it today. It was like, this was, they were going to build a community of teachers doing exercises out of the book they were going to be discussing it maybe they were going to be doing the poetry maybe they were going to you know i led them in uh stop pause breathe and think which is one of the songs that we do and you yeah. know it comes with hand motion so we do the stop sign we do the pause sign we do the breathe we do the think okay again it's getting back to that you know i do it playing drums but i also had to teach it as as a body drumming so we would do uh, slap our legs clap what do you do when you get mad at the game that didn't go your way? Do you throw the ball at the face of a friend, kick, scream, then run away? Do you feel the need to hit or bite because this anger is inside of you? You feel it all through your body, but you don't know what to do. There's nothing wrong with the feeling you get. That emotion lets you know you're alive. But how you react, that's a different thing. You must choose wisely in life to thrive. You need to stop, pause, breathe, and think. Will this act hurt, my friend? Stop, pause, breathe, and think. Will this make the problem in? Stop, pause, breathe, and think. How will these actions affect me? Will I get what I want and the problem leave or others stay away and keep me lonely? And then there's more like that. But wow. because we said, oh, thanks. Bravo. But because, <laughs> but because we did it, we, you know, we could do the heads part where I, again, I just read it to you. What do you do when, you know, if the problem is sure. hard and you don't want, and then we're just, we're just reading it. But the fact that I involved them, in a rhythm, yeah, it is now part of them. And you do it to kids who have trouble with conflict resolution. Now they also have the head start, but they also know uh, stop, pause, breathe, and think. There are some kids here at this school that before they leave my room, I look them right in the eye, and I and that's how we leave. Whenever you come, whenever you leave my room, you have to tell me the color of my eyes, and I'll tell you the color of your eyes. And then we wish each other well because I believe in eye contact. Yeah, and that's a that's a life skill there. But totally. on on some of them, I'll go, uh, Bart, your eyes are brown. I wish you well. And then stop, pause, breathe, and think. And they will do it along with me. So again, you know, I give them that little bit of a triage before they go back and be that awesome kid that we know that they all can be. Yeah, but they're just learning the missing skill of. Self-regulation. Yeah. I mean, just I think it's incredible. And you've got a very good vibe to you, obviously, from doing this for so long. But I think kids can just see that you're doing this. It's very genuine. Uh, you love the drums. You're a drummer. But also, it's just I feel like you've taken some different things that you you obviously like working with children. You mm -hmm. like drums and percussion. You've put it together. And I think this book is like it's just kind of a it makes perfect sense. It seems okay. like everything came yeah. together. Oh, like, yeah. Like correctly to make this happen. It, it, it came. I'm 55 and I couldn't have made this book at 45 I, mm. <laughs> or 35. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's everything. It's a fabric. Life is a fabric. And, you know, yeah. and we're all yeah. <laughs> very amongst, cool. Yeah. So I will share it in the description. There's a lot of people out there who are teachers and work with kids, both drum teachers and and, you know, uh, normal school education kind of teachers 
um, so they can check out the description there. And uh, Rob, do you want to tell people where they can find you? Obviously, I'll put the link mm-hmm. in the description for the book, but okay. like social media, all that stuff. Where oh, can they yeah, find I'm, you? I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. You know, and I'm real easy to find Rob Latham. So Rob okay. Latham, wherever at Rob Latham, you know, Rob Rob Lee Latham, I think, is on okay. Facebook, you know, uh, and then I'm on, like I said, I love LinkedIn. And so you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and then I teach, like I, I teach here at Ridgeview Elementary in, in Liberty, Missouri, and I pay, uh, teach drum lessons at uh, Palin Music here in, in Liberty. Oh, cool. So, so you no. know, drums for are, 35 years. Yeah, if people are around there, uh, then go talk to Rob and try and take some drum lessons with him because I think um, it seems like you're, you're a great kind of, uh, you got to be patient when you're teaching drums and yeah. I think you have patience. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah. So, all right, Rob, well, thank you for being here. Congrats to Ridgeview, obviously on all the success as well as a school. Um, this is a cool, different episode than, than, than some of the normal just company histories and stuff. So I'm very happy to have you on here. Oh, thank um, you. So thank you, Rob. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure.